Listen in the game. Yes, and hello once again. I'm Max Rat, and welcome to the Max Rat Deconstruction Zone. Well, it's been uh, well, it's been a little bit more, almost a month and a half again uh, uh, since my last show on uh, the Rockefeller Care two-part series. And uh, this morning, I have another. Uh, it's a uh, well, it's it's March twelfth, two thousand fourteen. Welcome once again to the Max Rat Deconstruction Zone. I'm Max Rat. Uh, yes, yeah, so I have another two-part uh, series of shows for you this morning. And uh, why don't I, well, it, it's a uh, you know I I always love to uh, I I always wish I could produce these shows quicker and faster and more of them. But I I, I really did a lot of research and uh, and educated myself on this uh, issue and this topic of the uh, school system here in the United States, and this is a uh, standard which will be implemented globally as well, or if that's what the powers of be are looking to do. And uh, let's just, uh, you know, I've uh, I've arranged uh, a whole show for you today, and uh, let's, this will be the beginning of, the, uh, of a two-part series. The name of the series is going to be Common Core Standards, Maintaining the Social Order. And uh, on that note, why don't I just kick off the show? Thanks once again for coming aboard. It's March 12th, 2014. And here we go with the Max Rackey Construction Zone. Once again, the title of the show today will be Common Core Standards, Maintaining the Social Order. Thanks for coming aboard. Where are the kids? What kids? Our kids. <laughs> and folks, if you love your children, make sure that you hear every word of this broadcast. Children, please take your seats. Now everyone take out your safety pencil and a circle of paper. Sorry I'm late, it's just like this new schedule is totally confusing. I've seen the old traditions die one by one. Grace and dignity and feeling for the past. All that matters here today is a pet banking account. You're trying to run the school like a factory for turning out money-making, machine-made snobs. You've raised the fees, and in the end, the boys who really belong to Brookfield will be frozen out. Frozen out. Modern methods, intensive training, poppycock. Give a boy a sense of humor and a sense of proportion, and he'll stand up to anything. Uh, we're going to pick up at this point with another master class. It's my pleasure in just a couple moments to welcome Professor Caroline Hawksby of Stanford University. All right, so um, <clears throat> the last clip uh, right before the uh, that was Eric Hill from NBC. Um, the that clip, the clip before was Mr. Chips. It was a uh, it was a clip from the uh, movie. I think it was like as old as nineteen thirty nine or something like that. Mr. Ch- uh, Goodbye, Mr. Chips, which is a very uh, uh, famous uh, old movie about a school um, in London and uh, a private school in London. <clears throat> Mr. Chips is an old uh, teacher there. Uh, he comes out and says that you now the um, the rich people are uh, are pushing out all the others, and um, and uh, the and the the typical um, student that they once had there is no longer able to um, attend uh, Brookfield School, which is the school in that movie. Uh, then then I have a clip from um, it's it was a summit called the Education Nation that was um, sponsored by NBC and others other big. Uh, Globalist uh, um, transnationals, and 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 right away they start with the name of their of their little segment is called the Master Class, and and I guess it's a they they try to make it a little pun on um you know the master is, is a teacher, but but let's face it they're they're it, it, it's just another <clears throat> subtlety of the um the Master Class meaning the ruling class, which and and, they, and then they introduce this uh, woman from. Who's a teacher from Stanford who goes into a some twisted nonsense, which we'll get back to you on. So, uh, Education Nation was a summit, and uh, and uh, they had a segment called the Master Class. Let's keep it moving. We're talking about Common Core standards today. I'm frankly more interested in the overprivileged kids, like my son. Give me your hands. You got city hands, Mister Hooper. And cut money all you like. My- the more money you got, the more excitement you're going to get. Come on. 
All right, that was uh, Stymie from the Little Rascals, and keep it moving. Why risk disturbance to the social order? What purpose does it serve? All right, well, uh, well, you know, let me just let me keep it. The aim of public education is not to fill the young of the species with knowledge and awaken their intelligence. Nothing could be further from the truth. The aim is simply to reduce as many individuals as possible to the same safe level, to breed and train standardized citizenry, to put down dissidence and originality. That is the aim of the United States. H. L. Mencken. H. L. Mencken, a famous eugenicist, and uh, that's going to be the thread uh, starting off in this show. Is is um, these standards are are not meant to uh, teach your children anything, or um, or make them enlighten them in any educational <laughs> educationally wise, in any way, shape, or form. This is to maintain the social structure, which is the the ruling class on the top and the peasant class um, at the bottom. Um, and I'm going to make that very clear to you, and I'm going to lay it all out for you as we keep it going. Theodore Chin in Communist China said, quote, The primary concern of education is not the acquisition of knowledge, but the remolding of behavior, attitudes, emotions, and thoughts, end quote. The remolding of thoughts. Is there anything else you need? Um, I'm a teacher. All I need are minds for molding. All right, then. <laughs> that was Jack Black from uh, School of Rock. Keep it going. Emotional engineering is what we do. That was a clip from uh, Brave New World. Quote, by design, we are doing social engineering. We're using education to consciously invent the future of our culture and society. Yes, uh, that was a quote from a guy named Douglas Renwick, who was a... Um, uh, California uh, politician, and he he was talking about how we're going to remold the uh, the school system, and uh, that Bill Cooper was reading that right from a a um, a California um, state legislative document or some sort. I don't remember exactly how it goes, but uh, um, we'll keep it going again. But but this is this is going to be the whole thread of this thing, and let's just keep it going, and I'll try to explain it in more in detail as we go. Quote. By design, we are doing social engineering. We're using education to consciously invent the future of our culture and society. I believe it's important that you not only understand Common Core and what it is, but how it got here, who's behind it, and the agenda. And there is an agenda. Aha! Just as I suspected. She's nothing but a common obile vulgaris. Oh, no! A common what? To put it bluntly, a weed. Yes, that was a clip from Alice in Wonderland. And, 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 and again, these, just like the, uh, the, the last, that earlier clip with the master class, we're going to talk about common core. And people think, oh, it's because we all have something in common, which is a nice thing to think. But um, what they're really talking about is the common people, the common core, the... Or the common weeds, and, and in Alice in Wonderland, she's she's told she is a common weed by the uh, those flowers in the um, in Wonderland. <laughs> Aha! Just as I suspected, she's nothing but a common obile vulgaris. Oh no! A common what? To put it bluntly, a weed. And if you are you're, you're familiar with some of the eugenics. Uh, Crowd, uh, Margaret Sanger was very famous for calling the um, the peasant class the or and and, and black people for that matter um, the com- the weeds and uh, who needs to need, need to be weeded out of of society. Are you busy? Just pruning a few weeds from the garden. What is it? Are you busy? Just pruning a few weeds from the garden. What is it? Our philosophy is that a child is like a climbing vine. Structure to cling to and the right gardener to tend them, they'll grow to the sky. That's the dumbest thing I ever heard. We're not talking about plants, we're talking about kids. And I know you people don't want this woman pruning and cutting and weeding your three-year-olds. That was Eddie Murphy in a movie called uh, Daddy Daycare, which I found uh, very um, pertinent to this topic. Uh, It's about a... A, um, and, and that was uh, Angelica. I think it's Angelica Houston. Um, she's uh, she was the headmaster of this uh, nursery pre preschool <laughs> that there was 
it's really just a daycare, but they were they were um uh already trying to um treat it we're treating it as a as a school and and with a rigorous quote unquote uh um uh plan to uh to to begin uh the education of very young children at three years old. We're gonna get into all that. That was from Daddy Daycare and so again she's and she was talking she considered she called the uh the uh, common folk weeds as well in that movie. We've got to start earlier. Okay, so now we're going to start with the um, with this show where where we're going to st- I'm going to show you all the people throughout the media who are, and, and some very well known people in very high places will all tell you that we not it's it's not you can't start a kid in kindergarten five years old any longer. Now you need you need, you need to be starting it. Basically, well, you can see for yourself where they go, where they go with this. It's ridiculous. That 2,000 days between birth and, and kindergarten is so critical. Right, so that was Maria Bartiromo. That was also in this Education Nation uh, Summit that they have every, they've been having every year. That was the 2013 one. 2014 one hasn't occurred yet. And, uh, and she's already talking about the 2,000 days from birth. Okay, from birth till the day they supposedly, a uh, child would supposedly go to kindergarten, which is approximately five years old, as it stands now. Um, uh, there, you're going to see just, it's just everybody who's, who's going to say, no, we need to start them from day one, from the day they're born. You know you can't swim well. I can swim fine, Dad, okay? No, it's not okay. You shouldn't be anywhere near here. Okay, I was right. You know what? We'll start school in a year or two. No, Dad, just because you're scared of the ocean. Clearly you're not ready and you're not coming back until you are. You think you could do these things, but you just can't, Nemo. All right, that was uh, Albert Brooks in Finding Nemo, and and when I and I, and what that clip is going to do is is going to is because your your um the the parent is uh rela- associates himself with uh, Albert Brooks the father figure character with Nemo Nemo's father, and and he's he, 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 he's telling Nemo you know I think you're starting school too young, and uh, Nemo's like oh no I'm not the kid's telling him that he's not he's ready, and that that's just to um, condition the parents. To um to turn their kids over to the state <laughs> at a um at earlier and earlier ages, and it's it's, it's effective uh, technique than what they're doing. And there, there are two thousand days uh, approximately between birth and when a child actually starts kindergarten. So tell us the kinds of things that are being taught in those two thousand days. And needless to say, the uh, the um. Uh, the when ch- the first six years of a child's life are the formative years when you're forming the child's personality and 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 when the when the child is learning infinite amounts of of uh, of knowledge about the uh, the world that they live in and how how it's going to go from there and it, it, and and that's why these these um uh, Nazi criminals want to grab your kid at the earliest age possible so they can start indoctrinating them with the um with the uh the social um engineering techniques that they're that they've been implementing and I'm gonna explain all that stuff to you in the show. From a child's first breath to his or her first day of school and beyond. Okay, that was another woman in the uh Education Nation Summit. Now here's Lamar Alexander, who's a senator from Tennessee, and let's see what he has to say. He- These schools will serve children from age three months old to age eighteen. That may be a shocking thought to you. Okay, so uh, now it's funny because I just did this show about the um, about the uh, health care, the Rockefeller care, and I and I featured many clips from um, Jay Rockefeller, who was the uh, who was a senator from West Virginia, and the one of the um, the main uh, writers of the bill of the health care law. And, uh, and and then so then I'm looking at this guy. I'm listening to this guy Lamar Alexander talking about these um, this this new Common Core standard initiative that they are that they're that they're, well and it's not so new frankly. Uh, and um, and I was like, wow, he sounds like somebody that sounds so familiar to me. And uh, and um, he because he sounds like a total psychopath. He wants to start kids at school at three months old. Three months. I'm not sure if you bring them there in their crib or their um, or their uh, or their or their. Uh, whatever, <laughs> they're, uh, <laughs> they're, 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 uh, they're, um, incubators, <laughs> even, if you will, but, um, 
But Lamar Alexander, so, 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 I'm, so I'm looking at him and I'm listening to him and he sounds so familiar. And then I look, then I just, and then I'm like, wow, he sounds like Jay Rockefeller. And then I took a look at him and I, uh, and I went to, <laughs> I went to make a video um, just comparing the, the, the two, Jay, Jay, Alexander, Jay, <laughs> Jay Rockefeller and Lamar Alexander, because frankly, they do not only look like brothers, they look like twins. Okay. And I'm going to include that in the, uh, in the, in the show. But so Lamar, Lamar Alexander is, um, and it's, uh, I'm, I, I wouldn't doubt for a second that they're very closely related. And like I said, they could be twins as far as I can tell. Um, they look like a very similar age, and they look almost identical. Um, okay, so he wants to start kids um, from three months to age. He wants kids in school from three months old, which, uh, which is, even the semantics of that sound insane to me. Um, three months old, the other, uh, Maria Barbara Romo saying, the first 2,000 days of your life, three months old, it's... Um, to age 18 from Lamar Alexander, and let's go. These schools will serve children from age three months old to age 18. That may be a shocking thought to you. Yeah, it may be a shocking thought to you. The cradle to grave, and that's a direct quote right out of the HRDP. HRDP is the Human Resources Development Program, and they're calling, they're talking a direct quote right out of their their uh, doctrine or manifesto is a um, is a is the phrase "cradle to grave" again, which is, isn't that nice? Cradle to grave. HRDP system is quote outcome and performance based is for everyone. Or if you studied a little more, you might go back and think the school might even need to serve the pregnant mother of the baby in terms of prenatal health care. Okay, so Lamar Alexander st- first he starts with uh, three months old. Now he said, "Let's just go, let's let's um let's start uh, the fetus in uh in uh in prenatal care in the uh, in the school system." It's, I'm not sure how he plans to do that. You know, maybe they're going to send some sort of a um, sonogram waves or something into the kid, and we'll we'll start indoctrinating him with the uh with the um the the uh, neo feudal system that they'd like to put in place right off the bat. Even is that twisted enough for you? By shaping good behaviors in puppyhood, you have the best chance of creating an ideal pet. All right, so so then I went to this uh, show, the guy, the dog whisperer guy, uh, Caesar Milan, and I, cause, because um, what I'm going to show you is that a lot of these standards are based on this uh, this behavioral um, psychologist, B.F. Skinner, and um, um, Pavlov, the Pavlov from the famous Pavlov dogs who designed these behavioral training systems. One Pavlov was the classical uh, conditioning, B.F. Skinner was the operant conditioning, and um, and and the dog whisperer kind of fits right into these things. So he's going to shape your behavior in puppyhood. By shaping good behaviors in puppyhood, you have the best chance of creating an ideal pet. Oh, you want to create an ideal pet. The developmental practices and the appropriate uh, methods for developing kindergarten students as they think and develop and learn, it will help them be more ready for their future. All right. Well, again, they were just like, just get, let us get our hands on your infant child. The careers and, the, and that we're preparing kids for requires them to really have a solid base, especially at this very young age. Okay, the careers that we're preparing kids for. <laughs> so we're preparing uh, four-year-olds and three-year-olds for their career already, uh, which is just absolutely twisted. It's right out of 1984. It's right out of uh, Brave New World. It's 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 just psychopathic and uh, and uh, that and, and they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna give you these these um, explanations where they say, oh, that sounds reasonable because it's such a global comp- competitive global um, workplace now and and um, and listen, there's all kinds of threats, <laughs> slivers of well, I don't even want to call that tr- tr- slivers of truth in there because because um, sure, there's always competition. There's always going to be people who are who are working hard, just like you, you're the next guy, and and there will be some there will and com- competition is 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 healthy uh, in my point of view. But that has nothing to do with grabbing a three year old. There's nothing to do with preparing them for their readiness for their for their, uh, for their work for their job. That's absolutely ridiculous. Okay, most people don't know what they want to really want to do with their lives until they're 30 years old, let alone three months old. It's ridiculous. I mean, you might think of career and college readiness being heavily impacted at the high school level, but think about it, the foundations are kindergarten. 
okay, yes, these are just uh, talking heads who are just going to keep pounding into your head, pounding into your head that we need to grab your kid immediately from the from prenatal care and uh, and and the first two thousand days of their lives and the uh, and three months to the next eighteen years or a cradle to grave. It's just it's just everybody and they're all seeing well, well, parroting the same absolutely psychopathic uh, doctrine that we that and and then they're going to give you in a Finding Nemo. They're going to make the parents feel like, yeah, you know, you're you're being a bad parent, or you're you're out of touch with reality if you don't um, if you don't subscribe to this nonsense. It keeps a focus for them about what it is they're preparing students for. So even if I'm a third grade teacher, um, wow, I have a, a role to play here in preparing students for college and for readiness. Okay, and when they say preparing you for readiness, you are ready. You're not preparing, or it's not. They're preparing you for readiness to accept the world um, totalitarian uh, neo feudal system. That's what they're preparing you for. Okay, that's what you need to be indoctrinated for, so you can be ready when that when your kid will accept that when it comes. That's what they want to grab your kid so early for, because the the, the people who are running this power, this psychopathic power structure, uh, have every intention of indoctrinating your child so they can they can uh, mold them and form them into good little Nazi Jugend, Hitler Jugend. Is there anything else you need? Um, I'm a teacher. All I need are minds for molding. All right, then. You've pushed for four-year-olds nationally, a national program where all four-year-olds will have access to preschool. Absolutely. Why, why do you want to take our children away from us? Yeah, and, uh, Stephen Colbert, kind of kids around about that. He's talking to Arnie Duncan, who's the head of the, uh, the uh, Department of Education, uh, who I got all kinds of uh, theories or, or uh, suspicions about him, too. Let's just, but I will, I'll leave that alone for now. Uh, and so he's like, why are you trying to take our four-year-olds away from him? And they both chuckle about that, like that's funny or something. It's not so funny to me. This comes up, for example, with our plan to tax the wealthy for pre-K and after school. Mm -hmm. I've said anyone who makes a half million or more pays a little bit more in their city taxes. Mm -hmm. What does it allow us to do? Full day pre-K for every child in the city, after school for every middle school student for free, guaranteed. Mm -hmm. Would be transcendent in terms of our school system. Would totally allow us to prepare our kids properly. Again, they kind of don't tell you what they're preparing them so properly for. They keep telling you, "Oh, we're getting them ready for something and preparing them for something." And um, and and what are you what are you preparing them for at th three years old? What do you need? You know, and and frankly, you know, giving the reputations of all these things with the with the healthcare and with the uh, now the school system stuff, I wouldn't let these people near my fucking kids. No way. You, these people are sick. Okay. So he, that was um, De Blasio, the mayor of New York, the new mayor of New York. Who's um? Who is just an apparatchik of these this criminal system? And uh, and he's on the John Stewart show, and he's going to tell you that we're going to tax the rich, so we can take your kids away from you at um in uh, infancy to start indoctrinating them to get to prepare them and ready them for this um global tyranny that they that they want you your kids to readily accept. Let me ask you a question. Can I if I because I this is I'm going to end up paying a little bit more. Can I go to the pre-K and, and be like, you're mine. And so you better get those grades up because I'm on your ass. <laughs> okay, and that's, that seemed like a scripted uh, little statement from Jon Stewart where he's going to say, well, because I'm, the, uh, I'm the, t the rich that you're going to be taxing, can I go to the pre-K and tell the, those kids you're mine? I mean, that's just twisted, and, and it certainly doesn't sound... Uh, um, not to, that I'm here to defend John Stewart in any shape or way or form, but um, it certainly doesn't sound like something that just comes up hap off the top of your head. That's something that's a, another planted, scripted uh, piece of uh, manipulative uh, thought, <laughs> thought manipulating doctrine to uh, to um, to make so. So now he, he's he's indicating that the that the rich are going to. Um, gonna gonna be saying your mind to a bunch of to your kids. Isn't that nice? We can't teach children like we used to teach children. We have to teach into the future and prepare them for the rigor. And it feels odd for us to talk about kindergarten being a rigorous place, but it is nowadays. 
Got to prepare them for that mysterious rigor or whatever that means. You can hear that word used a lot, rigor. Um, they they always choose little words and little buzzwords that they uh that 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 that, that you'll find throughout TV and movies and and in the news and everything. And rigor is definitely one of them. As we go, going to prepare them for the rigor of of the of the or the the um, slave labor, if you will. The product is a, quote, rigorous preparation for career and college, yet many educators agree that rigorous is a buzzword. These standards aren't rigorous, just different, designed for an industrial model of school. Yes, and, and we have a fascist state, uh, police state, um, global tyr- fascist tyranny, and the, uh, run by uh, the, the power, the power uh, corporate powers, and uh, so they're going to, um, they're modeling this, um, the standards, and, and you're going to see that it all, it's all coming from, from, the, um, from there, from the uh, social engineering um, United Nations fascist uh, oligarchs, and, that's, and they're going to try to grab your kid at, a, at, a, at an infancy and um, start molding them into good little slaves for you. And then she had the nerve to imply that my kid's not going to get into a decent college. Bonjour, les papa. Libby's still doing baby talk? Francine, she's speaking French. We need her to be trilingual so she stands out from the other applicants. For preschool? No, for college. You gotta start early if your child is gonna be exceptional. It's the only way to get into the Ivies. And that's a very prevalent, um, uh, 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 mantra that's goes it's, it's all over the place where and parents are all uptight about it how, how they're uh they they're you know i know friends who are who are shooting flashcards in front of my my friend has a little baby she's telling me that she's she can tell you all the shapes of trapezoid in a in a, in a pentagram pentazoid or whatever you know? and uh and it, it it seems impressive but it's it's just bizarre and twisted to me and uh and and uh, I was very well educated, and and there was no there was no need to to take me at three years old, three years old, or even two years old, or one month old, or three months old, and start drilling me with with um with flashcards. And, and for that matter, well, I'm going to get into uh, let's just keep it going. I'm going to get into that a little bit further too. They understand that we have a skills gap that can only be closed if America does a better job training and preparing people for work. Right, so the the excuse for, for to take your kids so young is that we have a skills gap. In other words, the 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 people of the the uh, the global workforces in China and India they have high better skills in us now. So we need to we, that's why we need to grab your kids earlier. That's not the reason. Okay, the reason is to indoctrinate them into a neo feudal slave system and get them and, and get them to accept it. And and and, they'll not, and and if you don't and you don't know you don't miss what you know what you don't know. I would think the brand new America school would be year round, open from six to six. Okay, there's psychopath uh, Lamar Alexander, who he he wants to start them at three months old and from six to six now, twelve hours a day from three months from three months old to eighteen years, and then uh, and then then they'll pick them up cradle to grave so that they'll that they'll come pick you up from there and you'll take you to your grave. Also, um, just twisted. Okay, keep it going. <laughs> I, I, I've said repeatedly, repeatedly, our day is too short, our week is too short, and our year is too short. Okay, our days again. That's Arnie Duncan, and he's like, "Yeah, we need to, we need to keep these kids. Uh, we have, to, we need to control your kids all the time, so you'll never get to see them." And you know, we're preparing them for the global competitive workforce, folks. Yeah, right. Teachers and principals in schools from Tennessee to Washington D.C. are making big strides in preparing students with the skills for the new economy. Preparing you for the skills of the new economy. We're preparing you for that, those mystery uh, new economy, which is, real, again, which is it's preparing you to accept a, t- a global tyranny with a bunch of um, absolutely inbred slime bags trying to run you and, and, and maintain their, 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 their uh, social hierarchy uh, because they're at the top and they don't want you um, having any upward mobility to challenge them. And, and so they're going to, whether it's um, drugging them and damaging the vaccines or, or indoctrinating them at a infant, from infancy, that's the plan, folks, and it's obvious. And, and everybody, every single person is blathering it all over the place. Here's this idiot Robert Reich, who's another... Just absolute um, brown-nosing apparatchik of these slime bags. Seen again and again the importance to young people of tying work-based learning 
to school-based learning. You know what they want? They want obedient workers. Obedient workers. People who are just smart enough to run the machines and do the paperwork and just dumb enough to passively accept all these increasingly shittier jobs with the lower pay, the longer hours, the reduced benefits, the end of overtime, and the vanishing pension that disappears the minute you go to collect it. Exactly, and uh, yeah, just just trying to program you to to be a to be a slave of the uh, of the fascist uh, ty- tyranny, and uh, and and you will have and you'll be slotted at a very young age. You'll say, okay, you're going to be a plumber, and you're going to be this, and you're going to do you're going to be a, a a janitor, and um, and I'm going to be your ruler, and you're going to learn to be told what to do rather than to learn to think for yourself. That's for sure, and that's exactly what this is all about. I couldn't help but notice how logically you argue. We don't have a minute to waste. We've got to do this fast because you always do it fast when you're trying to deceive people. You don't want to give them any chance to wake up and open their eyes. Just hurry up, go, go, go. That's how these things are done. Come on, Robin. To the Batcave. We haven't one moment to lose. The standards themselves are written in a manner that will teach children what to think, not how to think. Exactly. You mean teach them to be told what to think and what to do and do what we tell you and not to figure things out for yourself and learn about logic and reason and uh and and uh and critical thinking and problem solving. That is out to, out of the question. You are just being able to told you do you get learning how to follow orders and, and, and without you know, without taking the order without uh screwing it up. That's a, that's that's what this is all and it's training, it is not education, it is training. One of the conversations that we're having today is about reinventing education. Okay, and here we go with reinventing education, which is a very um, uh, disturbing uh, 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 mindset that they want, that they're putting through here. That we are changing everything on you. You know, you know. Um, uh, every anybody could see that the people um, years ago, including people um, even before my parents and their parents, were always, we always get dumber as we go and. Uh, and uh, my dad was um, far and away sm- <laughs> um, more, uh, smarter than I'll ever be, and uh, and and people of his generation were all like that. My mom plays classical piano. She's she taught me how to spell. I wasn't spelling ch- B when I was a kid, and uh, and uh, and and she and she made dinner and did laundry all day long too. So uh, um, these days you don't see anything like that. And 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 I I was I was a pretty sharp kid, but um. But the kids after us and before the now people are brain dead and, and chemically brain dead and, um, and uh, academically brain dead. Keep it going. What is our ultimate goal? A national level change. And all these people are preaching the same communist Nazi stuff. We're working to redesign high schools and partner them with colleges and employers that offer the real world education and hands on training that can lead directly to a job and career. Right, so in other words, if you don't get with the program, you're not going to have a job or a career, um, which, which, and it's not a, it's a career which is, which is working as a slave for some, um, somebody who rules over you. Now, don't you think it's fair that you help a little, get a job? No, I'm not ready to sell out. <laughs> and that was, uh, that was just a funny clip I found from an old uh, cartoon called Wait Till Your Fathers Gets Home, and his, he's trying to tell his son, why don't you go get a job already? His son lives at the house, he's 22 years old. And he's like, I'm not ready to sell out. <laughs> but but uh, I'm not sure how it quite fits in with this show, but uh, I thought it was kind of funny. And that's maybe the mindset that kids have these days. Let's just keep this going. So they're, they're, um, they're preparing you to, uh, to be a slave in, within this system. Yeah, and and that's, that's everywhere. It's from out of every single person's mouth. And you're going to see this throughout the whole show. And um, I'm going to entertain you with it too. But uh, you're going to see where this is going. So we're going to get the kids from three months old, prenatally, and uh, and we're going to take them, and we're going to we're training them, and, and and we're redesigning the whole system to make it so they'll so, they, so everybody will accept this garbage. Destroy the schools, restructure them for school to work. That's all Carnegie. We can be so maniacally political uh, that um, we just seek to destroy. So this is not like small incremental change. This is transformational change. Um, they don't care what's good for the student. Students will be channeled into what is good for the state or business. 
the federal government isn't promoting school to work as something imposed upon the people by Washington, but rather as partnerships among members of communities. This is their deceptive language. Anytime you go to any meeting where there is supposed to be a public discourse on the benefits, the merits, or the distractions, or the derogatory points concerning these things, believe me when I tell you that the audience is seated. The whole meeting was planned and will be controlled through its course to present a false consensus for and in favor of school to work and all of these programs that they want. And unless you are an astute, very smart judge of human nature and a very, very keen observer, you'll never know it. And that, that's something that was very obvious when I was watching this um, Education Nation um, Summit where that was an elaborate and with hundreds of people with, uh, on the stage, and they're all scripted and talking about, and, 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 and like Bill Cooper said when he, and he, when he was discussing education 20 years ago, which is, and it's prophetic how much, how pertinent, and how applicable all, all of his words uh, and, and his research is today. Um, and, and so in that education thing, there was so, it was so clever, it was cleverly arranged, but, but every single person in there is a, is seated in there. There is nobody who just comes who is who is um, shooting from the hip or uh, off the cuff. Uh, everybody was precisely scripted in order to um, to steer you into a, a a a seemingly seeming consensus. Oh, we're all into. We all agree. This is the greatest. And it's it, and it's not like that. And because most people question it or should be questioning it. And they make it sound like, no, 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 come on, you know, hop on board. This is going to be great for all of us, which is, which is the first sign, red flag. That means, of course, it's not going to be like that because these people do not want the best for you or your kid. They want the best for their, to maintain their social order. Studies show that those kinds of skills, skills like grit, determination, skills like optimism and resilience. Okay, so optimism is a skill. Okay, resilience is skill. See, these aren't even skills, and they so now they're twisting the meanings of words, and so they're going to grit is a skill. Just look at the words of the title: promoting grit, tenacity, and perseverance. That's what we want in education, right? This is even the 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 uh, the, the word choice here. It's not achievement. It's not a con it's not proficiency. It's not achievement. It's not accomplishment. It's not excellence. We just want them hanging in there, right? It's a grind, right? Right, that's what peasants do is hang in there and grind and survive. And we're promoting grit and we're promoting tenacity. And that's, those are skills now. Tenacity is a skill. It's not a skill, okay? A skill is being able to, to um, calculate um, uh, mathematics and to, uh, and to, um, and to, to, uh, to uh, um, write well and to, um, pr and to be able to um, articulate. Those are skills. Let them... Tenacity and grit and, and optimism is <laughs> skill. That's nonsense. And of course, it's brought to you by a bunch of liars, okay? Like um, Michelle Obama. Studies show that those kinds of skills. Skill and they're going to tell you, oh, studies show that, that skills like optimism, that's not a skill, okay? So, what kind of study is that, okay? That's, again, that's nonsense. I'm not trying to hear to pick on everybody because everybody's going to jump on me like, oh, you're picking on Obama because they're black. No. That's garbage. That's bullshit too. Okay, this is just nonsense. And just listen, listen to what she wants. Just sh stop worrying about all that garbage and listen to what she says. Okay, it's stupid. And and she there's um, resilience and and grit and tenacity are not skills. Okay, those are um are uh, characters or <laughs> personality traits maybe, but not uh, skills. Studies show that those kinds of skills, skill skills like grit, determination. Skills like optimism and resilience. It shows that a proficient, some of the proficiencies that they're striving for are collaboration, teamwork, cooperation, coordination, uh, designed to make your student prepared to just be told what to do for his entire life. Result, they never learn to question things. Nobody questions things in this country anymore. Nobody questions that. Everybody's too fat and happy. Everybody's got a cell phone that'll make pancakes and rub their balls in it. Huh? 
Way too fucking prosperous for our own good. Way too fucking prosperous. Americans have been bought off and silenced by toys and gizmos, and no one learns to question things. I'm following a white rabbit. Why? Well, I I'm curious to know where he's going. Oh, she's curious. The oysters were curious too, weren't they? Uh-huh. And you remember what happened to them? Poor oh, things. <laughs> Even in Alice in Wonderland, which is a Disney production, folks. So anytime it's Disney, it's going to be mind mind manipulation and thought um, indoctrination for children. And uh, they're going to they can tell you, well, you know, I think when I was Tweedledee and Tweedledum are like, well, you know, you know what, curiosity gets you into trouble, man. You know what happened to the oysters? And uh, so don't ask questions. Just do what you're told and shut up. And that's that's what they're um, training. Um, Children and now they want to train children at a very very young age, infancy no less, and um, where so they'll be good little because uh, they because I'm sure the studies if you if you are if you want to look at real studies I'm sure the studies will show you that when you can train when you train a uh, child at those very young ages you will um, you will produce a robot um, with with uh, with all those uh, with those uh, with that chip um, already uh, uh, fabricated to to accept. Um, uh, accepting orders and following orders from a um, bullshit um, uh, ruler of yours. Get back to work. I said back to work. We're working to redesign high schools and partner them with colleges and employers that offer the real world education and hands on training that can lead directly to a job and career. So we uh, we are we, we are partnering with uh, business, and that's and that's that's a definition of fascism: is a government partnering with private business, and so we can we can um, give them the real world training to be to be you know to be good little slaves um, in part of this uh, global tyranny that uh, that we're being brought to us, and that's how that's how we can because the people who are my age aren't going to accept it. So, but that's why they need to get your kids at such an early age so they can be conditioned into accepting this nonsense. Holy nightmare, Batman, could it be? I don't know. Yeah, I know. Oh, come on, you better not let me hear ya! All right, all right, all right, class dismissed. Get out of here! No! No, no, no. We have, guys, we have three more hours. <laughs> okay, and uh, we don't have three more hours, but uh, I thought to throw that one in there because it was funny that uh, we got a long show ahead of us, and uh, I'm going to get into this in, in depth, and, and let's just keep it moving. Baby, grab me some nachos. Yes, dear. Um, we're doing Common Core in New Jersey, and we're going to continue. Um, and and I and, and this is one of those areas where I've agreed more with the president than not, mm -hmm. and with Secretary Duncan. Okay, so that's the much demonized Chris Christie, who um, I have no. Um, like liking for for him either um, he's he's but he's gonna so, but for all the lefties who are gonna like oh chris christie this and chris christie that he's gonna tell you well he agrees with obama and, and arnie duncan on common core so that should tell you something right there that if you're such a chris christie hater um he's in agreement on this uh he likes this common core so that means you know whether you, you know so you're liking something that he likes by the way um that's obvious to me they're all in on this one. Everybody's on board on this one. Again, just like the health care. And this is, um, this is not going to turn out well for you and your children. I promise you. And so that's my goal every year is letting them know early on, I care about you and you can trust me and I, I have your best interest at heart. Yeah, that's what you'll be told <laughs> over and over. Uh, yeah, well, you don't worry. You can trust me. Yeah, uh, just, you know, uh, you should always... Uh, if if you don't listen to what people say and you just and you trust them sight unseen, you're gonna get a disaster on your hands. And this is what this is what's coming down the pike with this stuff. And this is evil to the core that they're going to try to grab children at such long young ages to try to indoctrinate them into a psycho system. This is one set of academic standards in math and English language arts that are being used to create curriculum for students in K through 12. Employers. Uh, are actively engaged in developing the curriculum. Okay, employers are actively engaged in developing your child's child's school curriculum. Isn't that nice? That's uh, again, that's um, employers are uh, private uh, uh, business pe um, uh, organizations, and they are partnering and, um, and 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 they're involved in your public school system, which is 
um, definitely not uh, in your best interest, I promise you. Before he stepped into the driver's seat at the U.S. Education Department, Duncan served as CEO of the Chicago Public Schools. There's another little subtlety where they're going to call Duncan the CEO of school. Again, um, that's just in your face. Again, just conditioning you to accept a corporate-run school system where your kids are, and, and a fascist school system where your kids will be slotted into their uh, their uh, their their place and uh, without any upper mobility or at all and for life and uh, and that's and now, well let's go into that now so the, you know um, years ago the, there was a quarterback he played at USC his name was Todd Marinovich and he um and they showed they used to show him he 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 did very well in college they used to show him like when he they he, his dad had uh, videos of him as a kid and they were like drilling him on all these things he would like. He would like have to hit the different dots with his left hand and his right hand and throw the ball and run and run sideways and backwards and all these different drills that they drilled him into. The guy never played one friggin' down in the NFL. He fell flat on his face. He was just a mess by the time he was um, old enough to actually go pro. So, uh, and that's, that's what's going to happen with all people, all these kids, because they're not going to be prepared to do anything except, except memorization and drills. And uh, that's not going to, that's not how you, you, um, you, you get through life is, is not knowing how to figure anything out for yourself and always just knowing how to memorize um, sequences. That's just, that's just not what you want to teach kids how to do. That's what this is all about, to make sure that they can't challenge the power structure. I can't talk about this anymore. I have to go pick up Olivia at her preschool. Oh, hi. I don't know what to call you. Uncle Wilton is fine. Okay. I just love what I saw here. That was amazing seeing these kids enjoy math. Math doesn't have to be boring. I've wanted to teach Olivia math for a long time, but I didn't think she was ready. Well, if you make it fun, they learn. Right, Olivia? One times one is one. One times two. And then they use the uh, one times table because so the kids can uh, he can do what times eight is and then they then the kids go eight and once eventually after the first three numbers they realize that if he says one times whatever it's going to be that they just have to repeat that that uh, that that number again you won't see them doing this uh, with uh, t t even two times two is four because that then you have to figure that one out in your brain and this is not about that once again so and and um. And this is from the Cosby Show, and again, and she's like, "Oh, I just love what you're doing here again." And she's like, "Oh, if, if Lisa Bonet in the Cosby Show thinks it's great, then then you should think it's great too, and you should embrace it." And uh, again, that's that's like I always try to do is show you where it's in everything you're watching, and 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 so you're and you're being fun, whether it's Finding Nemo or the Cosby Show or dozens of other things as we proceed forward. Hello, Denise. Oh, hi. I don't know what to call you. Uncle Wilton is fine. Okay. I just love what I saw here. That was amazing seeing these kids enjoy math. Math doesn't have to be boring. I've wanted to teach Olivia math for a long time, but I didn't think she was ready. Well, if you make it fun, they learn. Right, Olivia? One times one is one. One times two. And they're implying that um, that learning isn't fun to begin with. You have to make it fun for them. And uh, just on a lighter note, uh, my good friend is um, his. Uh, that was his. He, he his dad was a very famous and one of the greatest jazz uh, drummers in his in in in, in uh, ever. And uh, that was Max Roach playing. He was on the Cosby Show playing. Um, Playing that drum, that's why that drum was so tight. It was like pop, 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 pop. pop. So uh, anyway, so um, again, so they're um, they're indoctrinating um, Lisa's Bonet's um, daughter Olivia into in this uh, preschool thing, and uh, and and she's saying how great it is.
Uh, we're also very proud of Lily. Uh, tomorrow is her first day of kindergarten. Oh, so oh, to, Lily. 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 to Lily. To Lily. Yeah. To Lily. And you'll be impressed to know that she's going to be one of the smartest girls there. Lily, sweetie, what's the square root of 64? Eight. Wow. Eight. Yeah. Nice trick. Hey, Lily, what's the square root of this potato? Eight. Congratulations, you have a parent. <laughs> that one hit home all the way to that was from another very popular show called Modern Family. So uh and, and so so he uh he um he teaches his his little daughter how to uh what the, you know that to memorize a, a the square root of sixty four is eight and then and then the kid exposes that by saying she she'll just say eight to anything you tell her she's a parrot and that's exactly what happened there I'm gonna play that one again because I thought, I like that one so tell me about your day Oops. how was uh, we're also very proud of Lily uh, tomorrow is her first day of kindergarten oh. Oh, so yeah, Lily. 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 Yeah, so she's in kindergarten. She's already doing square roots. To Lily. And you'll be impressed to know that she's going to be one of the smartest girls there. Lily, sweetie, what's the square root of 64? Eight. Wow. Eight. Nice trick. Hey, Lily, what's the square root of this potato? Eight. Congratulations, you have a parent. There you go. There you go. So tell me about your day. How was, uh, math? We were doing conversions on the overhead projector, and Mrs. Hosner erased her mistakes with spit. Oh, huh. <laughs> and that was from uh, that was uh, King of the Hill, and Frank is like, oh, yeah, oh, really? He didn't know what to say about that. Um, that has nothing to do with math, obviously, and and that's kind of a. Uh, a lot of these shows will try to make you um, think that all kids are a bunch of idiots these days, and you know, in, in some cases, it's it's because of these these uh, these teaching systems that they have that kids are are totally lost, and uh, it won't end well. It's time for math in Liz Bradstreet's kindergarten class Dan at PS one twenty four in Brooklyn, New York. Dan needs twelve buttons for the dress. Okay, now this one I'm going to tell you right now, again, like we were talking about seating the, um, the summits and seating the uh, meetings. Uh, this one is a, is a contrived, she's going to say buttons, like, um, like, she's some, like she's got some ghetto-y accent or something like that. She's a teacher in Brooklyn, and, and this is, this is a, this is a um, Common Core um, um, pr promotional uh, video that, that is supposedly done with, like, with lots of money and high production value. And they're gonna, and she's gonna, and they're gonna, they're gonna say that she's a third grade teacher, and she says buttons like that, and um, I don't believe that for a second. I believe that she, because that's the only word she mispronounced. She says like that, and it's just, uh, it's just nonsensical, and and it's just, just to, just to con confuse and uh, and manipulate your ideas of what's really going on, and this is nonsense. But let's just listen to how it, it how they play, how they how they cleverly uh, um, contrive this thing. It's time for math in Liz Bradstreet's kindergarten class Dan. at PS124 in Brooklyn, New York. Jan needs 12 buttons for the dress. First, Jan finds four buttons. And even though they say finds four button, buttons, like, what do you mean she found it? And, and so and what, what, they, what, what they're leading this towards is that they don't want your kid to know how to figure anything out for themselves or to do math for themselves. So they, and they're, they're going to try to steer them into all these other bizarre social things like, and we're going to get into that, but uh, the, what they want you to do at the end of the day is not know how to figure anything out yourself. So you're going to have to follow orders because you're not, or else you're not going to be able to survive. And that's, that's what this is about. Let's keep it going. It's time for math in Liz Bradstreet's kindergarten class at PS124 in Brooklyn, New York. Jan needs 12 buttons for the dress. First, Jan finds four buttons. Next, Jan finds two buttons. Last, Jan finds six buttons. Can Jan make the dress? Look, yeah, I have three apples. Okay. You have two apples. Yeah. I give you one apple. Do we now have the same number of apples? Um, Repeat it one more time. See, this is why I, I, I should have sent you to a private school. No, 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 repeat, no. I feel like they, there were too many kids, not enough one-on-one uh, -on -one instruction. No, it's not that I, I can't, I, I can figure it out. It's okay, just that, I'll that usually I would, I would have had things memorized before I was tested. You should be able to do this just in your mind. This is, like a, this is a logic game, and I'm not good at Okay, just part of vision. He, this is very cleverly done. He said, "I'm not, I'm not good at logic. I usually have it memorized." And he is He's not. He's not able to think for himself. Uh, we'll keep it going. Visualize the things I'm talking about. Okay. I have three apples. Mm -hmm. 
you have two apples. I give you one of my apples. Do we have the same number of apples now? You have two left. That's that's right. You get you gave me one. Mm -hmm. How many did I have in the beginning? You had two to begin with. So how many is that? That's three. So how many do I have? You have three. <laughs> gotcha. No, you you have three. You answered it for me. <laughs> exactly. Uh, that's frankly that was very cleverly done. That's where it's at these days. And uh, you know what? Hey, I'm gonna play that one again too because I like that one. Let's go. Look. Yeah. I have three apples. Okay. You have two apples. Yeah. I give you one apple. Do we now have the same number of apples? Um, repeat it one more time. See, this is why I, I, I should have sent you to a private school. No, no, no. Repeat. No. I feel like they, there were too many kids, not enough one-on-one uh, -on -one instruction. No, it's not that I, I can't. I, I can figure it out. It's okay, just that, I'll that usually I would, I would have had things memorized before I was tested. You should be able to do this just in your mind. This is, like a, this is a logic game, and I'm not good at Okay, just try to visualize the things I'm talking about. Okay. I have three apples. Mm -hmm. You have two apples. I give you one of my apples. Do we have the same number of apples now? You have two left that's that's right you get you gave me one mm -hmm. how many did i have in the beginning you had two to begin with so how many is that that's three so how many do i have you have three <laughs> gotcha no you you have three you answered it for me what is a d i mean a d is 70 <laughs> percent i mean if i had 70 percent of a pie right <laughs> i mean that's a lot of pie <laughs> Negative B plus or minus radical B squared minus 4AC over 2A. That's correct. A girl answered a math problem. You know what that means. A witch! 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 Tell me, that number you all wear, what's it mean? Oh, Fahrenheit 451. Why 451 rather than 813 or 12? Fahrenheit 451 is a temperature at which... Book paper catches fire and starts to burn. Brad, how did you do? I was hoping to get a C, but I didn't. That's all right. Oh. I got a C plus! All right! Good work. Effort, buddy. The effort. Nice point, jerkball. <laughs> Good effort, man. Good effort. Thanks a lot, Duke. Get me a soda, will you? Dad, are we going to be able to work on the hot rod? Yeah. Okay, so the kid gets a C plus. He's all happy, and the parents are like, "Good job, good effort, man." And then, and 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 that's the kid. Okay, his bro little brother gets A's. Okay, he's a C student, so he gets a C plus. Everybody's high five him. And then the father goes, "Go get me a soda," which is very slick, also. So already he's uh, he's being p prototyped as a as a go as a gopher. And then um, and then he says, "Are oh, we going to work on the hot rod later?" The, the other kid doesn't like to work, doesn't want to work on the hot rod. He's more in he's more interested interested in in um, knowledge and, and academics. So so again, so we're slotting the kids at uh, at um. Uh, to uh to for their destiny in life which one so he'll be a so the uh the c student will be a blue collar kid and the a student will be the um will be the uh will be a uh will be the the more uh he'll be he might be he might be he might get the job in the uh in the inner party like um like uh like with um with uh in 1984 you have the uh the people in the jumpsuits who are like like Winston who are just do, doing their uh their uh slave chore and then you have the people uh the ruling class above him and uh and and, and so you know well you might say well you know if you're if you're smart you should be in the ruling class I don't like the idea of any of this being it doesn't have to be all ruling class people should have mobility you should be able to um to, let's say you you're a late bloomer let's say you are uh you choose to study something or maybe even come up with an idea and invent something. Um, but no, now you're going to be pigeonholed and, and slotted into, into, a, into a dead end system where you have, don't have no choice to cho do those types of things. That's the problem here. Are you ready for that test today? I guess so. What do you mean you guess so? Oops. When I began teaching in 1974, intellectual meant specific standards. The child will be able to punctuate a sentence, a child will be able to discuss. 
truly intellectual activity. So child will be able to figure a math problem. But even under the new Common Core, if, even if they said three times four was 11, if they were able to explain their reasoning and explain how they came up with their answer really in um, words and in oral explanations, and they showed it in the picture, but they just got the final number wrong, we're really more focusing on the how. Okay, so now we're uh, we're well. If you gave it a good try and you and you made a picture, showed a picture of how to what three is, um, eight plus three is eleven, or, or, or three times four is eleven. Um, you 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 might even get a better grade, or you know, because you you showed grit and tenacity and uh, optimism versus the kid who knows how to calculate the uh, the numbers correctly. That's that's not what we're looking for here. We're looking for people who are able to take an order and to uh, and to to show that um, hard, you know, that, that they're going to uh, work hard for you know get the most uh, production productivity out of them in their in a workplace or something like that, which is nonsense. But that's what they're um, that's what this is all uh, contrived to make you think is how it works. Are you ready for that test today? I guess so. What do you mean you guess so? It's not fair. I study twice as hard as Randy does. He gets A's and I get C's. Certain things he does better, certain things you do better. You kick his butt in basketball, don't you? Yeah. To me, it's the effort you put into things, not just the grade that counts. Again, that's uh, that's scripted. Uh, it's obviously scripted. It's a TV show, and uh, and and that's and that's again they're 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 training kids to uh, to not to. It doesn't matter if you can't figure it out or if you can't. You don't have any capabilities for critical thought. It's whether it's it's, it's your effort and it's, it's your and it's your ability to uh, to follow orders and follow uh, and do what you're told. Are you ready for that test today? That's, that's I guess more. So. That's more important. I like me. I like me. Everyone's a winner. <laughs> yeah, that's in The Simpsons. Keep going. Mathematics grade two, a strand called understanding place value. A student might be expected to understand that the three digits of a three-digit number represent amounts of hundreds, tens, and ones. For instance, 706 equals seven hundreds, zero tens, and six ones. When you get to fifth grade, that sounds like this. Recognize that in a multi-digit number, a digit in one place represents ten times as much as it represents in the place to its right. So that progresses, and there are multiple strands in math. Okay, now this is another thing that I've seen everywhere, which is this totally confusing and, and throwing in all these different words that you don't know and, uh, and, and, and talking around about things like, how are you going to judge if some kid knows place values in, 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 in math? Just what about, you know, it doesn't matter if you can, if you can just do the, pro, you can do the math. It, it matters if you, um, if you can, um, re, you can, you can recite and, um, and, and draw a picture of the place values. It's just, just absolute nonsense. And again, it's so, cause, cause the, the, the idea of, of knowing how to do it and, 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 and knowing how to, uh, um, uh, correctly um, execute a, a, a math a formula or a problem that's not and uh, solve a problem that is not what they're looking for anymore. They're looking for people who know how to um, follow directions and follow orders and uh, and training kids to do that and and, and making it less important than um, than uh, than to um, to know how to do the calculations than it is to know how to follow directions and follow orders. And that's exactly what this is all about. And it's a training system. And this is this is garbage and bullshit but these people are all on board because you know that's what that's what happens when you're uh when you're um when you're in a totalitarian system you gotta go long to get along common core delays their development in math uh, to the point by eighth grade because they're they up know to the two grade. years behind right right they, so they're and they're, and they're intentionally delaying people's development making them more focused in kids development focus means doing fewer things at any given grade so that students have more time to internalize, practice, and learn what is being done in that grade. Okay, focus means doing, you know, slow, slowing down, and uh, and so they can internalize, or they can be indoctrinated or uh, propagandized into, you know, into getting and training and trained properly. And that's what this is. This is again. This is twisted. And this is what does that have to do with learning? Slowing people's down, slowing people's learning process down to get them to um to grasp the the indoctrination that's what they were doing here making them more focused focus means
doing fewer things at any given grade so that students have more time to internalize, practice, and learn what is being done in that grade. Whatever that means. In the elementary grades, the writers have focused the standards into main concepts called domains. They start in kindergarten with counting and cardinality, operations and algebraic thinking, number and operations in base 10, measurement and data, and geometry. Kindergarten, algebraic thinking, and cardinality. I looked at it, obviously. Like it, it just, it's got a simple um, explanation, the number of elements in a set, okay? If there's... If you have uh, three numbers in a, in a whatever that whatever you need that set for, I don't know. But uh, and you can say, well, there's three elements in the set, so the cardinality is three. Um, again, that's just con confusing people. And then and, and it's I never heard that word in my life until uh, until starting this show. Cardinality. Um, I I'm very well, highly educated, and I and I did very well in um, in um, school and in math and in, in and and in um, in. Uh, in uh, reading and writing, and uh, that's, that's so. This is all garbage, and, that, and they're going to tell you that your kid, your your kindergartner needs she algebraic thinking. It's just nonsense and insanity, and um, this has nothing to do with that. This is to make them so they can't. So you, you, you we we can decide who passes or fails on some uh, whimsical um, uh, decision, and uh, and. And so we can again, we can keep we can if you so if we don't like you, we'll uh, we'll keep your kid down. And uh, and if we you know and if we if we feel like you can be useful to us in some sort of way, maybe we'll um we'll uh, we'll push him forward because we'll just say well he knew what cardinality meant or something. In the elementary grades, the writers have focused the standards into main concepts called domains. They start in kindergarten with counting and cardinality, operations and algebraic thinking, number and operations in base ten. Measurement and data and geometry. <laughs> the crock of nonsense, though. It would be so nice if something would make sense for a change. Uh, like, um, what is it? Not algebra. Geometry. I was so bad. Terrible at geometry. I was good at algebra. Which one's geometry? No. Like, it's shapes. like shapes. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, uh, those were teachers discussing geometry in the uh, teacher's lounge in a, in a movie called Chalk, which was kind of a funny movie. And uh, and so the and the teachers don't even know what the hell geometry is. Again, um, this is all to dumb down. You can, is, can you see? I mean, is it obvious enough for you? Keeping it going. Glenn is buying a hot dog. The hot dog costs seventy-five cents. Solving word problems involving money appears in the second grade standards for measurement and data. Show three different ways Glenn can pay for the hot dog. And uh, and as you can see, those kids are reading something. They're they're not uh, calculating or solving uh, problems by any stretch of the imagination. But they'll tell you that they are just in, in money management uh, in second grade. Glenn is buying a hot dog. The hot dog costs seventy five cents. Solving word problems involving money appears in the second grade standards for measurement and data. Show three different second grade standards for measurement and data, whatever that's supposed to mean. This is ridiculous. Ways Glenn can pay for the hot dog. What steps should be taken through financial literacy or other programs to ensure that students and parents understand their loan obligations? Ooh, so now we're um, asking this. This is they're asking uh, Arnie Duncan, the um, the uh, Department of Education head. Um, how can kids, how do we, what steps can we take to know, make sure that kids know how to pay back their debts, okay, to the uh, Federal Reserve or the uh, banking cabal? Isn't that just beautiful? And uh, that is absolutely sick. And uh, again, and then, and, and again, you know, we get, so we're going to have to teach kids how to, how to owe money. You know, they, they owe money, they owe money, and they get, and because, you know why? Because they've been saddled with, uh, with a giant debt <laughs> that's not theirs. So now we're going to have to indoctrinate kids on how, well, you know, you, gotta, you have to teach those little infants how to, how to get ready to pay back, that they're going to be paying back that debt for the rest of their lives.
We've seen more and more states adopt financial literacy graduation requirements. Um, that's a step in the right direction. But finding really creative ways to integrate financial literacy into social studies, into science, into math. Again, not starting in high school, but in kindergarten, first grade, and second grade. There are huge benefits there. I think the whole mortgage crisis our country went through was in part due to the lack of financial literacy. So we're paying a huge price for this. That is absolutely twisted. So now he's going to blame... The um the mortgage crisis not on the fact that uh that banks were packaging um uh mortgage-backed securities and fraudulently and using the same act mortgage-backed security in ten different uh security um for trusts and uh and uh that and it was and rampant fraud was throughout the whole industry and then they were pumping um pr um, um printing um dollars which blew up which blew up bubbles in the in the in the industry now that has nothing to do with it it's because kids weren't taught how to pay their debts back. At a um at in at infancy, <laughs> uh, that's that's a problem. Pe people are, are financially illiterate. That's a problem. That is not the problem. Yes, I mean people you could stand to know a little bit more about what's going on, but the, but they should want to teach them that and want to teach them that the, the banksters are, are running a fraudulent operation, um, headed by the Federal Reserve, which is a which is a criminal organization, and not and no, it's your fault because you didn't learn uh um you didn't we didn't learn we didn't teach your kid that in second grade. Oh, in kindergarten, he said. Keep it going. What steps should be taken through financial literacy or other programs to ensure that students and parents understand their loan obligations? Uh, you know, there's significant research, not only about the development of the brain in those early years, but also, I mean, there's research from the Federal Reserve Bank in Minnesota, for example, that says the most effective economic development investment, economic development investment uh, that a state can make is in early childhood education. Right. So now this guy's telling you that the Federal Reserve Bank um, did research, and yeah, they're like, yeah, we need to get you kids early uh, to um, teach them how to pay back the, 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 the debts that you saddled them with when we printed all that money um, to and to throw to to, uh, to bail out uh, foreign and, and and domestic criminals, uh, banking criminals, and, uh, and 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 rob the American people. Um, you need, you know, we need to. Um, the Federal Reserve has done early studies on that, and we need to get your kids early so we can indoctrinate them into believing that they owe that money. Isn't that nice? What steps should be taken through financial literacy or other programs to ensure that students and parents understand their loan obligations? It's hard to believe that anybody would deliberately do this to children, but they are. They're evil people. So, you never learned cursive? Well, I know hell or damn and bit. Uh, cursive handwriting script. Do you know the <laughs> multiplication tables? Long division? I know of them. Give it a rest, Hank. All parents care about these days is zero tolerance, drug policies, and literacy. Why can't Johnny read? Why can't Johnny read? God, that gets old. A literal reader of the text might say that Goldilocks ate the porridge because she was... Hungry. But what would Freud say? Language skills are a critical component of childhood development. They're part of the core curriculum here at Chapman. Right. Chapman's uh, basically a daycare center where they're teaching him. They're asking kids uh, what about what Freud thinks. <laughs> These are three-year-olds again. And, uh, and they're like, this is part of the core curriculum, core, the common core curriculum at Chapman, which is a this fancy daycare center in the movie Daddy Daycare. Again, this is just insanity, but, but they're programming you throughout every bit of media you can find. The Common Core contains reading standards, not just for literature, but also for informational text, which should account for about half of all reading by fourth grade. Okay, so now they don't want you reading books or literature, uh, or literature, or, or uh, um, and the stuff that 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 throughout history has has has, has made children grow and learn. Um, now it's like, no, we're gonna have to teach how to read a manual or a, or a or a or a directional um, or or informational text, they call it, which is really just a list of orders, <laughs> basically. And yeah, you need to know how to, you need to know how to follow how to read the orders correctly. The Common Core contains reading standards, not just for literature, but also for informational text, which should account for about half of all reading by fourth grade. In fourth grade already, without, you don't get any more books, any more literature. You're getting um, uh, reading manuals and, uh, and uh, directions uh, um, pamphlets. In 2010, the states got together 
and they created something called the Common Core. They raised standards. It's a huge, what? A huge act of courage. And I okay, so he calls it, the states get together and created something called the Common Core. That's not created by the states by any stretch of the Again, they're going to make it sound like it's a consensus. Well, we all agreed. Uh, that that was. Stephen Colbert's show, and that was um, that's Arnie Duncan again, the the um, secretary of the um, education or whatever they call him, and uh, he's going to say, well, "Yeah, that was a great act of courage that they did. That isn't that great." I understand that, there, that there's going to be a little less emphasizing on uh, things like you know reading literature, like reading Treasure Island, and and more say learning to read manuals <laughs> or memos. <laughs> And uh, Arnie Duncan's standing there laughing while he said that he's, and they just told you that the, uh, they plan to, um, that half of the reading you're going to have by the age, by fourth grade is going to be um, manuals and memos and not uh, literature. And Arnie Duncan just laughing. He just thought that was funny. Another big shift in the reading standards, more nonfiction. Experts say that while literature, like fiction and poetry, is important, kids must also be reading informational texts. In 2010, the states got together and they created something called the Common Core. They raised standards. It's a huge, what? A huge act of courage. And I understand that, there, that there's going to be a little less emphasizing on uh, things like, you know, reading literature, like reading Treasure Island, and, and more, say, learning to read manuals <laughs> or memos. <laughs> and and Arnie Duncan has something to say, we just laugh at it. Laugh, yeah, that's what we're doing. Isn't that funny? Do you ever read the books you burn? Why should I? First, I'm not interested. Second, I've better things to do. And third, it is forbidden. Of course. And instruction manuals? <laughs> is that part of it? Because I, I read instruction manuals and memos. Is that true? Just laughing. Give it a rest, Hank. All parents care about these days is zero tolerance, drug policies, and literacy. Why can't Johnny read? Why can't Johnny read? God, that gets old. By fourth grade, at least half of students' reading should be informational. And by high school, at least 70%. Show me any textbook, any subject, any grade, any page, and I will show you blatant propaganda uh, meant to transform this nation. That's the least you can expect from the State Office of Education or the Department of Education in, in the case of Arne Duncan. Same thing. They mm -hmm. just don't base it on anything other than what I consider to be propaganda. Students need to be able to read tactical writing, as well as historical and scientific writing, as well as literature and literary writing. These, this comes from the informational text in grade two. Um, a student has to identify the main topic of a multi-paragraph text, as well as the focus of specific paragraphs within that text. By fifth grade, they're supposed to determine two or more, more main ideas of a text and explain how they're supported by key details and summarize the text. By 11th and 12th grade, that sounds like this. Determine two or more central ideas of a text, analyze their development over the course of the text, including how they interact, and build on one another to provide a complex analysis, provide an objective summary of the text. Okay, and there she's talking about second graders, and 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 she and and, they, and she she can make you think. Well, if you didn't understand what the hell she's talking about, it's because you're an idiot or you don't know. You just don't know um, what you're talking about. And I, I will quote um, Albert Einstein right here and now, where he said, uh, "If you can't explain something simply, you don't understand it." well enough or you don't understand it at all okay if you can't explain something simply this is the opposite all this garbage is like it's it's instructional scaffolding it's cardinal uh, cardinality it's um it's, it's identifying the topics of paragraphs in at second grade i mean uh, this is just nonsense and 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 and, and, and the, the, an adult uh, um <laughs> such as myself um, a highly educated adult doesn't even understand what the hell she's talking about, and but your but your second grader is supposed to understand that, and 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 and, then, and that'll just get the kind of parents all freaked out. They're like, oh no, I don't even know what she's talking about, and I'm and my kid, I'm not kid, my kid's not gonna be prepared for the prepared for the um the and ready for uh, what's to come, which is which is and and and, and God forbid should you ever ask what's to come, which has nothing to do with like uh. Uh, life, it has to do with a, well, it has to do with a life living in under tyranny as a slave. There's no shame for any one of us to pick up a piece of reading and not get it the first time around. That sometimes I have to read it, and oftentimes I have to read it again, and I... 
she's got that NPR voice too. She's like this. Yeah, you just have to read it again and again, and and you're just a moron, and don't be don't be embarrassed if you don't know what I'm talking about. Even though I don't know what I'm talking about, and I'm not you know, I'm, this, and I'm reading a script with an NPR voice, NPR voice to make you think, to make you think you're an idiot because if you don't know, because I'm so smart and you're not. I have to read it again, perhaps with some, maybe some scaffolding, someone giving me some good questions about it, someone helping me through it. Okay, and by the way, scaffolding is in the, is a, is a, is a terminology used in the construction business. Now they're using it in um in uh in um in in uh, teaching, <laughs> and, and I looked it up, and I don't even feel like going through it. It's all nonsense, okay? Let's just leave it at that. You want to go look up what instructional scaffolding means, you're going to get a crock of garbage on Wikipedia or whatever, or whatever, um, whatever internet um, garbage spewing outlet you, uh, you choose to use. Do you like green eggs and ham? I do not like them, Sam I am. I do not like green eggs and ham. Would you like to eat them here or there? I would not like to eat them anywhere. I do not like green eggs and ham. I do not like them, Sam I am. Okay? Now see, he was going to punch Sam I am, but he walked away. You don't punch, see? He walked away with it. (laughs) And uh, that was Eddie Murphy again in Daddy Daycare, and that was a funny clip where... Where uh, Sam I Am doesn't want, or he doesn't, or, or the guy doesn't want um, the green eggs and ham from Sam I Am. And, he was, and so Eddie Murphy was like, he was going to punch Sam I Am, Sam I Am, but he walked away because he's, and then he's trying to teach him a good lesson in uh, nonviolence, I guess, in that one. Dr. Sandra Stotsky publicly stated she felt the standards left students with an empty skill set lacking literary knowledge. One of the great outrages about Common Core is how it dumbs down, trivializes, utterly subordinates math skills, reading skills, historical knowledge, all that goes by the wayside. And you get all these social, uh, soci- social cultural building exercises. Look at the language here. Core sex standards? What does that even mean? Sexuality standards, co- core content and skills. Is that what you're sending your kids to learn? Sex skills? And, and it may sound like a quibble here, but the language really does mean something. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Am I the only one who finds all of this more than a little disturbing? I think they're all insane. Uh, absolutely. Uh, just keep it going. Uh, yeah, so we're going core sex skills. That's in there, folks. And that was just absolutely twisted. And um, I can go into it even further. There was a lot on that. But I, I just I thought it was... Uh, it was just so distasteful that uh that that, that it's so twisted that I if you want to go do your homework on that you can yourself just look up core sex skills, core sex standards. But is college for everybody? And um it's just absolutely twisted. School to work, job ready is not a voluntary program, as all students will have to participate in it regardless of what they have told you. According to the Governor's Commission on Workforce Preparedness, quote, the Commission proposes the elimination of the general track requiring all students to be enrolled in a job-ready program, end quote. And the fact of the matter is that far too few young people are getting the skills they need, middle school, high school, community college, four universities, to go into the world of work. Yeah, and, and these people are just, Arnie Duncan and these are, these upper level uh, education um, uh, administrators are just pushing. You know, you, you know, he's not going to be ready to compete in the global marketplace. That's because uh, we've already shipped all the jobs and the and the factories out of America, United States. So now they're going to they're going to back their way into an excuse for your um, for your for for why your kids are are destitute and uh, and um, out there and and and, and, be, and become a new peasant class. You can't really separate school from work these days, and that's why the Education Department and the Labor Department are working so hard together. Okay, the Education and Labor Department are working so hard together because you can't separate school from work these days. That's Robert Reich again, who's a total jerk-off. For the next week, rather than your normal schoolwork, you will be learning how to make things. Now, does anybody know why you are in shop class? You are here because you are America's future. You may someday be doctors or lawyers or scientists. Most of you, however, will be pumping gas or cutting sheet metal. And that's why we have shop class. 
There you go. Um, South Park kidding around and saying uh, most of you guys are going to be pumping gas and cutting sheet metal. That's why you're in shop class, just so we can train you to uh, for your for your future role as a uh, gas pump uh, 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 gas jockey. All right, I want to transfer into metal shop. Come in. Well, what'd you do before math? That's my new favorite class, shop. Shop, Bobby. From now on, when I ask how was your day, I mean how was shop. And and Kill is you know he loves uh, he loves his uh, little workshop in his garage. So he's uh, he's he's delu- disillusioned into believing that shop is a wonderful thing where kids learn about uh, making things, which is great. But uh, but uh, what what is this? Anyway, let's just keep it going. But uh, so, so Kang is, uh, is is saying, yeah, you know, when your kid is is being trained to be a janitor in school, you should um, embrace it because you know he's it just that's that's the that's the good stuff in life. Oh, it's great! Our regular teacher eloped with the lunch lady, so until the two of them get back from Branson, Principal Moss is having us use shop as a study hall. We don't have to make anything. What? We are kind of worried about how we're going to pay for us college tuition we're kind of hoping he becomes a plumber you know we've been trying to encourage him we've been pulling his diapers down low so he gets used to having his little butt crack showing (laughs) i would rather have i would rather be a mechanic than uh and a bad mechanic working at a gas station you know down the street that nobody goes to i'd this glenn beck just just talking nonsense and again he's just jumbling all the He's he's there to confuse you, period. And anybody who's listening to him, obviously, um, the I don't have to tell the lefties not to listen to him. But the but um, he, he he's 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 plugging um, Common Core also, which is the um, which is which is which is which is being brought to you by the lefties. So uh, uh, again, this so Glenn Beck is on your team too, by the way. All you uh, all you people think this is such a good thing. I would rather have. I would rather be a mechanic. Than uh, and a bad mechanic. He'd rather be a bad mechanic in a in a garage and nobody goes to. I don't even understand what the hell that's supposed to mean. But this is just nonsense. And and, and again, people people think they're too dumb to understand. No, he's not supposed to understand it because it's nonsense. I would rather have. I would rather be a mechanic than uh, and a bad mechanic working at a gas station. You know, down the street that nobody goes to. I'd rather be a mechanic than in the system that is coming. What are you people? On dope? Anyway, children, I'm going to sign you all a paper. I want you all to find somebody in your own life who is in Vietnam and interview them about it. What if we don't know anybody who is in Vietnam? Then you get an F, fail the third grade, and have to get a job cleaning septic tanks to support your drug habit. We don't cook in home ec. We watch educational movies. All right, well, let's fire up Chester the Home Exter meets Dustin the Dustin Cowboy. <laughs> Chester the Home Exter and Dustin the Dusting Cowboys. Yeah, you're going to be a maid or a, or a cook or whatever. Round two of the competition, cleaning skills. I want this floor so spotless I can see my reflection in it. Okay, you know, that was, that was a, sh- a Disney show called Ant Farm where they're supposed to be... Um, the uh, the brilliant kids and uh, they're um, having a competition for cleaning and uh, cooking and uh, and uh, skills um, in, in their school. Isn't that fun? I should have explained. Home ec isn't for honor students. It's where dum dums learn to make ice. You know my daughter's in that class, right? Yes, Bob, I do. Okay, but shouldn't we be challenging these kids? What? Like a fight? I don't want to fight those kids. Maybe the girls. Oh, teaching not... them, teaching them how to cook. Bob, the movies mellow them out. It's not like we can slip meds into their milk anymore. <laughs> what? Hmm? I gotta go. Wait. How am I doing on dishwashing, Mr. Belcher? Good, Tina. Can't slip meds into the meds into their milk anymore <laughs> like we used to. He says, and uh, okay, so she's like, "How am I doing, dishwasher? Yeah, you're a dishwasher now. Yeah, good, good job, Tina. I think I'm a great waiter. I think I'm a great hostess. Yo. I think I'm a great waiter. I think I'm a great hostess. We'll be competing in sewing, cooking, and cleaning. So pair up. The winning team will receive a fifty dollar gift card. Okay, so that's uh, the positive reinforcement where we're going now. We're going to compete in sewing and cleaning and cooking, and then they're going to give them a $50 gift card uh, 
for the winning team, which is uh, that's the most incentivized kids into being good cleaners and cookers and uh, sellers. <laughs> then you, everyone, everyone succeeds, and everyone must have prizes, as in Alice in Wonderland. That was B.F. Skinner himself saying, yeah, that's how it works. You know, you give them the uh, reward and uh, everybody will have prizes, just like in Alice in Wonderland. Everybody succeeds. Isn't that great? What are these black dots here? Demerits. What kind of a sick school is this? Exactly. Hmm? So what do you guys do? I work at The Gap. Really? How about that? I've been to the gap. Yeah, I've been there as well. I like your t-shirts with the little pockets. So what does the staff intern do? Besides go on juice box runs? Yeah. Oh, lots of things. You know, hand out the juice, make sure people are happy with their juice, mm -hmm. clean up all the empty juice boxes. Okay. These are all your new jobs, folks. This is the new, well, this is the new economy. <laughs> this is the Obama new economy. You're a sewer. You're a cleaner. You're a duster. You're a uh, plumber. You're a... You don't want to be a mechanic, but you'd be rather be a mechanic and if it's going to be so bad to go to Glenn Beck. And then you could work at the Gap or be a waiter or a waitress. And then you're going to get to, you're going to, get to juice for people. <laughs> you can get to people's coffee and their juice. Yeah, that's, that's a good job. That's your new job. So what does the staff intern do? Besides go on juice box runs? Yeah. Oh, lots of things. You know, hand out the juice, make sure people are happy with their juice, mm -hmm. clean up all the empty juice boxes. Okay. You see, my real name isn't Mike. It's just a nickname from where I used to work. Where? Microsoft. NASA. Disney. Is this what you really want? Women who behave like slaves. I have a cran apple, two grapes, and a bunch of kiwi strawberry. Here's the crazy star you asked for, Zeke. Extra crazy, just how you like it. Could be crazier. They would peck on the little button, and if they pecked the right number of times, they would get a reward, i.e. some seed. And so they soon learnt that they must peck six times and very fast, and they'd get the seed. And then they would do that again and again. And he could train them to do all sorts of things. That was uh, um, on a BBC special about B.F. Skinner. And she's like, yeah, you know, he was training pigeons to peck on a button and they can get uh, some they get a reward and that's that's how this is the and and they're going to tell you they're, and, and they brag that that bf skinner's uh um uh behavioral conditioning uh techniques are being used in the schools on your children and they're, they're going to not only are they going to not deny it they're going to brag about it excuse me miss how do you feel about being a delta are you happy i'm glad i'm a delta alphas have to think things through betas and gammas have too much to do yeah, it's good being a moron. That's from uh, Brave New World. We help you. We perfect you. By turning us into robots? Because when the year 2020 rolls around, nearly two-thirds of all jobs in this country are going to require some form of training. You're going to have to be trained to be a waiter or a plumber or a, uh, or a janitor or a... Uh, duster or sewer that's what that's what kind of a training that's what two-thirds of the jobs are going to be those garbage jobs that's what according to michelle obama and she's going to try to package it like and not tell you what, what exactly she means but that's what she means how do you like being called a human resource instead of people or human beings you are now a source of productivity in the business sector Again, you can't separate education, the world of education, from the world of work any longer. Uh, by the way, what did you major in? Well, I started in golf, but that didn't seem too practical, so I changed to sociology. Well, good for you. What aspect of sociology? Folk dancing. <laughs> uh, someone else? Zeke, you want to try? I don't need this stuff, Mr. B. I ain't going to college. Just try it, Zeke. No, nope. well, nope. I can't do it. Zeke. No. Hey, Toshi. My mom's taking me to get ice cream. Want to come with? Absolutely not. They're in music lessons. One of the many extracurricular activities that will ensure their entry into a top university. They have no time for treats or games or bathroom breaks. Now mark your books, number five. Cat is to mouse as frog is to... Are they doing SAT prep? It's never too early to start. That was another uh, clip from Daddy Daycare. We're doing SAT prepping in uh, third, in three, no, not third grade, three years old. Again, just insane. And uh, and they're gonna and they're gonna make you, parents think like, oh no, I better stop prepping my kid for the SATs, or else my kid's gonna be falling behind. 
The SAT has already conformed its college entrance exam to already done it, conformed its college entrance exam to co Common Core, even though the first generation of Common Core kids won't be coming through for 10 or 15 years yet. That's because it's already in the schools. I mean, one of the things that I'm careful to say, and it's true, I don't make this up, that, you know, 90% of what they're asking for is already happening in classrooms. And frankly, that's how the uh, the news cycle and and this and the media cycle works in everything. Um, when you're talking about the, the Ukraine situation recently, that's these things have already been implemented and done with. And then they bring then they roll out a theatrical presentation of how the story just to explain away the nonsense that they they already implemented. And um, and so they can make you seem like so. So what they're telling you now is like you know, even though we're just telling you this is being put in now, now they're gonna they're gonna throw in at somewhere in the middle somewhere that oh by the way this has been <laughs> all of this has been in there for years and years and years already anyway. So don't worry about it. So too late now, even if you don't like it. If you drop out of high school today, you're basically condemned to poverty and social failure. There's a fear tactic from Marty Duncan. It's not enough to train today's workforce. We also have to prepare tomorrow's workforce. I had a lemonade stand for about six weeks. Yeah. I made no money. I had to burn it down and collect the insurance. <laughs> There's an enterprising idea. As Margaret Terry Orr of the Institute on Education and the Economy at Columbia University's Teachers College remarked, quote, Not everyone embraces school to work. There is a deep fear we are going to track children into dead-end careers, end quote. I'm telling you right now, it's exactly what they're going to do. And worse. Ian, they're telling us that, um, that the, it's to channel, and it is to channel kids into a, into a set them in this, keep them, solidify their, uh, their, 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 um, social status immediately, and where it can't be, um, moved upwardly any longer. But it's also to um, dumb them down to make it so they're, they're unable to do anything except be, do what they're told because they have no skills and no uh, abilities for critical thought and figuring things out and problem solving for themselves. Maybe it's time to give up those dreams. I did and things are going really great for me. Once your child is channeled, that ends all other hopes that he or she or you as parents may have ever had for your children. And, you know, one thing I want to say is because I, I you know, when I chat some with some of my friends um, and I tell them I'm working on this show about Common Core and I, I'm telling them how they're going to slot their kids into, uh, in, and with no upper mobility, a lot of these people already feel like they're already at the top or they're, or they're, or they're up or they're very, they're well off and, and they are. But, um, but, uh, and, and so I, I feel like some of them is like, well, that's not going to happen to my kid because my kid's, um, privileged, which is nice and it's fine. But, um, just remember what, uh, Martin Luther King said that injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. And, uh, there's a lot of expansion, uh, exp <laughs> um, elaboration on that, um, uh, quote I can give you. But, um, you don't, you don't want, you don't want to be part of a system where, where that you know you you you're, you better just thank your lucky stars that you are privileged, but uh, that's not how it's going to work out well for all of us, and that's certainly not what you what these people preach. By the way, anyway, they 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 like to act like they're very um, benevolent and uh, and caring of all people, but uh, yet they they will present that attitude. And I'm not saying that they're, they're evil people for presenting that attitude, but they but they kind of say, hey, I got other things to worry about right now. And my kid's going to be fine, so I won't worry about it. I doubt everybody's going to be fine at all, even the more fortunate people. Because this is psycho stuff. Once your child is channeled, that ends all other hopes that he or she or you as parents may have ever had for your children. You are so pretty. And more than anything else, meeting that 2020 goal is going to take young people like all of you across this country stepping up. Oh, come on, Hiko. Let them have some fun. College is years away. That attitude is why my children will attend Harvard, while Steve will be lucky to be waitlisted at an online offshore college. Oh, you whore. Get the parents fighting with each other, too, and uh, competing with each other and all these things. And, well, keep it going. 
The commission report goes on to state that during grades 6 through 8, all students will develop career plans. The program here is that many students 11 to 13 years of age do not know what their careers will be. Although Job Ready permits students to change their career plans after the 8th grade now, won't be that way in the future, many students will be reluctant to do this because they would fall behind other students of the same age who were not changing career paths. Because it means to graduate, they would have to demonstrate proficiency in their new career field. And I don't say it again. Uh, they're talking about uh, you're going to have to decide what your job is going to be in seventh grade or eighth grade, and that. And, and certainly, there's loads of uh, of talk about it happening in third grade or fourth grade, or even lower than that, or even before that in infancy. Um, they want to slot your child and to and to stick him in their sp- social spot. Um, again, folks. Um, a multitude of very successful people um, change jobs in their 20s and in their 30s even. And uh, some people um, some find, may not find their their ultimate job success and, 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 and some with extraordinary success maybe until their 40s even and, 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 and so on. Uh, you, you, you would always like to have that option not to uh, be slotted at infancy <laughs> to, to a uh, janitorial job or a cleaning job or a, uh, or a waitressing job or a services uh, serving um, rich people's, wiping rich people's butts job or something like that. And, um, and that's what's going to happen if, if, if for whatever reason your kid has a, a learning disability or, or they've da- been damaged by vaccines because you were too um, uh, distracted to pay attention to the tragedies that goes on with things like that. And, and this is all coming right down the pike right at you. And it's all to, um, to, to uh, dumb down Americans so we can bring them in to, uh, on an equal um, playing field with um, the, the um, emerging economies and nations where, where, where they're, uh, where they're, they're um, educating kids and at a, at a very normal rate and learning lots of stuff. And, and, and meanwhile, at the same time, we're damaging the kids here <clears throat> to make us into a bunch of stupid morons to uh, level it all out, even though there's wonderful people everywhere who have all kinds of talents. But uh, this, is, this is intentional to dumb them down. A strong military remains our best defense, but a strong educational system is our best offense. And this psycho Arnie Duncan talking about our military. Again, I don't know what the hell that's supposed to mean, um, that he's the Secretary of Education. He's like, a strong military is our best defense. And, and, and now, now education is an offense. It's just twisted. If he's going to stay here, he should have the proper conditioning, as all of us have. Young people cannot be trusted to form their own opinion. It's our job to tell them. Okay, and now, now we're going to get into this final segment. <clears throat> I'm coming down the back stretch of this show, actually, folks, and uh, I'm going to get into this final segment. This is a, this is for part one of the uh, of my Common Core Standards uh, um, show, and uh, and 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 it's uh, maintaining the social order, if you will. And um, <clears throat> this last segment is going to be about um, how how the Skinner, um, the B.F. Skinner um, uh, behavioral conditioning. Um, uh, Techniques are going are being used, and and you're gonna see how it's 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 clearly right in front of your face. And uh, I'm just gonna so so kids have to be told what to do. Young people cannot be trusted to form their own opinion. It's our job to tell them. Excuse me, is there anything I can do? I am a scientist, sir. Uh, is there any problem? You know, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt things. He, he isn't a good swimmer, and. I just think it's a little too soon for him to be out here unsupervised. Well, I can assure you, he's quite safe with me. Look, I'm sure he is. But you have a large class, and he can get lost, you know, from sight if you're not looking. No, I'm not saying you're not looking. Okay, and uh, that's uh, Finding Nemo again, where the teacher is going to be like, don't worry, he's safe with me, I'll just take him away from you, and you're a stupid parent, and, you know, let's you just step aside, and we'll uh, handle things from here. School to work, across the board, uh, for corporate, global corporate profits, our children are nothing but human resources and guinea pigs to be trained like animals. Animal training using Pavlov, Skinner. There you go. We're getting to, the kids are to be trained um, like animals using the Pavlovian and Skinner, Skinnerian techniques, if you will, of operant and classical conditioning. All animals follow calm, assertive energy. 
And uh, I, I, again, I'm going to take a few clips from the uh, dog trainer because this is the same thing. He, that's how he, uh, he trains the dogs in the same manner, same like an animal trainer. Um, that's what he's being implemented in your, in your kid's school. And it's clear and it's everywhere. There's not even, there's not even enough for debate, frankly. The child is there to learn behavior. Skinner thought he could also train humans of any age to behave better. Enforce rules of behavior. Uh, I got Dave Skinner <clears throat> in his own words. It can be taught and could, could be done. I rehabilitate dogs. I train people. Are you finished? Well, thank you. How thoughtful. Would you like a chocolate? Um, yeah, sure. <laughs> Thanks. What was that? You said be nice to Penny. I believe offering chocolate to someone falls within the definition of nice. Oh, sorry, Sheldon. I almost sat in your spot. Did you? I didn't notice. Have a chocolate. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, am I talking too much? I'm sorry. Zip. Thank you. <laughs> chocolate? I know what you're doing. Really? Yes. You're using chocolates as positive reinforcement for what you consider correct behavior. <laughs> Sheldon, you can't train my girlfriend like a lab rat. Actually, it turns out I can. <laughs> well, you shouldn't. There's just no pleasing you, is there, Leonard? You weren't happy with my previous approach to dealing with her, so I decided to employ operant conditioning techniques, building on the works of Thorndike and B.F. Skinner. Yet by this time next week, I believe I can have her jumping out of a pool, balancing a beach ball on her nose. There you go. That was from the show Big Bang Theory, which is a popular show on TV, and their scientist and, and the smart kid is... Uh, is train is giving the, the, his roommate's friend uh, girlfriend chocolate so she he can manipulate her behavior and uh, and he and he credits uh, Skinner with that uh, with that those techniques and uh, and it's being that's exactly how the, and, and 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 if you heard that clip uh, I um, I uh, played earlier in the show where the um, they were going to do have a cleaning and, and sewing competition and cooking competition for girls. And then they were going to give the um, the winner a um, a prize and uh, Skinner. And then I had a clip from Skinner saying, "Yeah, that's how we do it. It's called positive reinforcement." But what I will also tell you is that what's really going on here is they tell you, "Yeah, we do positive reinforcement." But what re but what really works more efficiently and effectively, and including to in, in, in and Skinner admits it. And I have a clip of him in his own words admitting that is negative reinforcement, meaning punishment is a way to get it done quick. The um, people will will. will do things you can train people quicker with punishment than with or, or punitive um, means and you can with uh, positive and um, or uh, uh, ben or, or pre uh, pre offering somebody reward uh, means and that's so but you're gonna see it uh, how it unfolds so anyway so they're they're doing the whole thing on operant conditioning in that show the Big Bang Theory is kind of funny but uh it's very telling okay everybody come on chocolates candy come on yeah! That was in uh, Brave New World. We're like, chocolate candy. Kids like, yay, we'll do whatever you want. And he could train them to do all sorts of things. I mean, he trained pigeons to play ping pong. Okay, and that was a little zing on the Chinese people when he said, uh, when they're in BBC, on the BBC uh, uh, special about skin, he's like, he, tra he trained pigeons how to play ping pong, which means, and a pigeon is like a peasant type uh, uh, um, example of a peasant, of, of, of the peasants of the bird uh, family, and um, and he played, and he, he trained them all to play ping pong, which... Um, is is ridiculous, but uh, that's that's just a zinger, and and that's and if you don't think if you don't think that that's what that is, then you're kidding yourself. That's what, that was a zinger about um about the Chinese uh, population. Keep it going, coming down the back stretch here in the show. That's the way I want to feel with everybody here, one hundred percent certain that they're going to behave, and they're not going to respond with fight, flight, or avoidance. They're going to be calm, submissive, huh, Junior? They want you calm, submissive. That's uh, that's uh, the dog whisperer again. No, we don't need you doing a fight, flight, or, or, or avoidance. We need you calm, submissive, Bubby. Oh, behave. Austin Powers. 
He's learned his different response to each sign by being rewarded with food. Its behavior is shaped by controlling its environment. Behavior is shaped by controlling the environment. Well, you have to do it, first of all, by constructing the kind of environment <clears throat> that will, will bring the child under some kind of control. Got to construct, that was B.F. Skinner himself in his own words, you got to construct an environment that will bring the child under control. And that will be, that's used, that's, and the way to do that is with punitive uh, um, conditioning rather than to, you know, just, you know, um, give them a treat if they're good. You, you tell, you make sure, like, if they don't do it, they're going to be sorry. And that's, that's, um, that's how you bring uh, the child under control by ex constructing an environment as such, which would be the tyrannical fascist neo-feudal environment that we've uh, that I've been speaking of. There you go. Using positive reinforcement techniques, I could train that behavior out of her in a week. <laughs> no. If you let me use negative reinforcement, I can get it done before we go to bed. There you go. He said positive reinforcement will take me a week. Uh, negative reinforcement will take me. I'll, I'll have it done before we go to bed. One of these black dots here. The merits. What kind of a sick school is this? Hmm? <laughs> school of Rock. That was uh, Jack Black. And they had two charts on the board, on the wall when he became, when he went in to teach the class. And one of them was with the gold stars and the other one was with the black dots. And just for the record, the um, black kid, he answers that question. Those are demerits with the black dots, which is, again, a little bit of a, um, a um, subconscious uh, racial slur or, or in there and... Uh, do what you like with that, but that's what that was. He's just have what happens. The black kid is, is the married kid with the black dots. There you go. Kind of like in um, the Little Rascals when Buckwheat ate the um, the uh, vanilla ice cream and the uh, and the white kids had chocolate ice cream, or and vice versa. <laughs> so, just to uh, just to maintain that eugenicist racial division, divisive um, garbage that, that that's in every show. Before you go on with your interesting speech, get over that chair. Get over that chair! Get up. Hey, bud, what's your problem? Until very recently, school kids were beaten unmercifully. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you got them to study. Mm -hmm. But uh, that isn't necessarily a sign that that is the way people are. It's just that that is what you do if you want to get a quick result. But if you can study. All right, so he's saying, yeah, you know, beating him mercifully is unmercifully is uh, is what you do if you get a quick result. He's not even, he's he actually subscribes to that as a good uh, technique, but he's like, yeah, but they don't let you do that anymore, unfortunately. Good return to positive reinforcement or reward, the result is, is deferred. You don't get an immediate result, you say. There you go. So B.F. Skinner himself, in his own words, is saying, yeah, you know, um, they don't let us do the negative reinforcement, but uh, so, but now they're going. That's going to be used to convince us now that, um, you know, this this uh, tyrannical uh, police state um, punitive um, system is real. Let's face it, folks. That's the best way to do things. That's the best way to get things done. And we're in a very competitive environment. With we don't want the Chinese beating us out, so we're going to have to punish you and your kids if you don't do what we tell you. You know, it's all for your own good. If I showed even a little bit of tolerance. We couldn't call it zero tolerance. Yes, I... And what they're doing there isn't teaching, it's controlling. If I showed even a little bit of tolerance, we couldn't call it zero tolerance. Yeah, man, we're going to try to call this zero tolerance over here. Yes, I'm not assuming that people are naturally good or generous or anything. I think they're neutral. Which is twisted, and that's B.F. Skinner again saying he's not assuming people are naturally good. He said they're neutral, and we train you to be good or bad, and you get trained to be good or bad. That's bullshit, too. People are inherently good, except for these criminal murderers, Satan murder, Satanist murderers, or whatever you want to call them. Uh, um, they're they're the ones who are going to try to convince you that that's not that you know we it's it's we 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 um we control everything and that's not how it works. Yes, I'm not assuming that people are naturally good or generous or anything. I think they're neutral. They, and better if anything, they are 
they have been submitted, subjected more to punitive control. After mm -hmm. all, a child learns how to walk because he's punished when he falls down, mm -hmm. and uh, this is built into us. That is not what you don't you see. See, he can, can, can confuses conditioning with learning. Okay, people have the ability to learn to learn from from uh, from trial and error, from from uh, from experience. And uh, he's going to say, no, that's that's um, that's all has to do with uh, uh, negative reinforcement and, and positive reinforcement. I, I don't believe I don't agree with that garbage one bit, but that's what they want you to believe so they can implement those things on your kids. Oh, my God, he's an idiot. It is an intellectual development. It's an intellectual openness. We want you to do whatever we we tell you to do. All humans have to learn to be pack leader to all dogs so they can all block or redirect unwanted behavior. All right, in this case, uh, the humans are the, uh, the ruling class and the dogs are the, uh, are the peasant class, which is everybody else. So he's like, you know, all humans have to learn how to, how to know how to control these, these dogs here. And uh, that's the dog whisperer again. Oh, behave. <laughs> Using positive reinforcement techniques, I could train that behavior out of her in a week. No. If you let me use negative reinforcement, I can get it done before we go to bed. All right, and um, we're coming down the back stretch in this show. I'm going to give you a couple more clips about how they're, uh, how you don't have, this is not, you are not being giving this, these are, this is not up to your choice. Uh, you, you are being, this is being dis, uh, this um, training and uh, job training and uh, and social um, st um, stratus uh, um, um, status uh, um, solidification is being crammed down your throat, and you don't have a choice. In President Clinton's February the fourth, nineteen ninety seven State of the Union speech, he called for national education standards and said, "Quote." Every state and school must shape the curriculum to reflect these standards, end quote. Okay, Clinton said in the 90s, um, uh, you're going to have to do it. Okay, we're going to have to, you're going to have to, and, and, and now they do it, well, they, they say, well, we're going to cut off your federal funding if you don't do it. This, this, there is, and this, so every single state in the union is going to be like, okay, we'll take the money because they got a bunch of um, um, gr grifting <laughs> um, slime bag who's, uh, politicians, if they put into that those places of position already, and then they're going to uh, take your tax money, pay off a whole bunch of people in order to um, indoctrinate your kids into a psycho system. That seems to be where it works with everything, and that's the way it works with this. We're not taking away anybody's right to do things. We're simply forcing you to understand that you have to make the conscious decision to go from one cup to another cup. Yeah, jerk off Michael Blumberg is like, um, you know, we're simply forcing you. It's, but you know, you know, you got plenty of choice. We're just simply forcing you, but you're, but you're being forced to do it, which is, which is double talk. But and, uh, and you need that to hear him again say that he's like, yeah, he was talking about those, the um, so you're not allowed to drink big, um, large sodas anymore in New York, and uh, among all, all kinds of other twisted stuff, and they're mandating vaccines, forcing people to inject their kids with poison, and in uh, themselves for that matter. And we're simply forcing you, but uh, you still have. But we're not taking away your rights, according to Michael Bloomberg. I'm not sure what the hell that's supposed to mean either. But that's that's double talk. That's the way they do it. And then most people aren't paying attention to doodling with their iPhones, and they like that. And they and they'll and they'll on Facebook they'll click. Oh, I like Mike Bloomberg. He's a billionaire. People not paying attention. We're not taking away anybody's right to do things. We're simply forcing you to understand that you have to make the conscious decision to go from one cup to another cup. Yes, yes, you're living in a police state. Your government is evil. Shut up, slave. A strong military remains our best defense, but a strong educational system is our best offense. I think our, all our society is run by insane people for insane objects, mm. objectives. But he will still need to wear his muzzle as his rehabilitation progresses. Is it possible we focus too much on the conditioning mm -hmm. and not enough on the people being conditioned? I'm not sure I follow. Mm -hmm. Perhaps if we spend less time telling people how happy they are, we might figure out what makes them unhappy and design conditioning to help them. Marks, please, don't turn shoddy performance into an attack on our whole program. 
that you go, uh, you know, we're we're we're, we're, we're just paying. We're, he's it, like, let's just keep 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 stay the course, and uh, we're conditioning these slaves to do what we tell them to do. Don't uh, rock the boat. Just get with the program. Stick with the program. Uh, yeah. So uh, this is the end of this uh, part one of the Common Core standards. Um, uh, maintaining the social order. Uh, you know, I usually try to do a little bit of a wrap up, but this one I think kind of speaks for itself. It's uh, you're being um, you're you're the, the the key here is that they're trying to grab your kid at an extraordinarily young age, if not from infancy or even even prenatally, which is what um, I didn't say that uh, that was uh, that was right out of Lamar Alexander's mouth, um, who is one of the uh, people in charge of this uh, these Common Core the Common Core um. Em- um Push and uh, <clears throat> like I said, he has. A, I will include that video in my uh, in the uh, in the uh, on my website on, with this show <clears throat> where he looks like uh, Jay Rockefeller's twin brother. I went out. I mean, I almost. I'm absolutely almost 100 percent sure that they must be um, very closely related. Like I said, if not brothers, twin brothers. Uh, and there and so he so but Jay Rockefeller's out there pushing the. Um, Barack Rockefeller care and Malone Marlowe and just pushing this twisted common core standards all so they can maintain their own social uh, dominance over us and to um, destroy your kids' lives, destroy their brain. Um, don't te- teach them how not to think properly, to take orders from them. And uh, that's, that's what we got going here. And this is, so this is part one. I went through the, uh, the indoctrination at a young age, how it's school to work, school to work, school to work. How, how we're convincing people that their kids are useless and they're going to be janitors and and service um servicing the rich and uh and the elite and um and and following orders and then and we're using conditioning from Pavlov and Skinner very uh well known and uh explicit um conditioning training techniques for your little animal kid uh, I got a few more clips to go here. Uh, I'm going to sign off. I'll I'll sign off one more time, but uh, let's just run this thing out. Thanks once again for coming aboard the Max Rat Deconstruction Zone. I'm Max Rat. Is it possible we focus too much on the conditioning Mm -hmm. and not enough on the people being conditioned? Not sure I follow. Mm -hmm. Perhaps if we spend less time telling people how happy they are, we might figure out what makes them unhappy and design conditioning to help them. Marx, please, don't turn shoddy performance into an attack on our whole program. I'd like to ask you something else, sir. I'd like to ask you something else, Sonia. I don't really dare. Go ahead. Is it true that a long time ago, farmen used to put out fires and not burn books? It is worth it. And it is working. The problem is we're still not reaching enough kids. And we're not reaching them in time. And that has to change. Got to get them all. Got to get them all. That's the <clears throat> the mantra from all these people when it comes to again when they were talking about my you check my vaccine show. They talk about um, we got to get all 85 million kids in Africa with these vaccines. And, and Obama's like, we got to get. We're not getting enough. We're not getting them young enough. We're not getting them fast enough. And then and Arnie Duncan's like, fast, 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 fast. And uh, and then Lamar Alexander and all and Maria Mur- Barta Roma and all these other people. We got to get them at birth and cradle to grave and uh, and um, and for at their first breath. These are all words that we're using from 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 pe- well known people that you know in this show from in their own words, uh, keeping it going. Um, but Lamar Alexander said we need to start kids that need to start school at three months old. Three months, start school. <laughs> okay, I'm not sure how that's going to work. Uh, that's just psychopath stuff. That's what you get from these people. And people are like, oh no, he's a great guy. You know, I'm like him on Facebook. Uh, anyway, Obama's like uh, Obama's part of that too, as you well as you know where I stand on that. If you listen to any of my shows, I'm going to sign off right here. Thanks again for listening to my show on uh, Common Core Standards. This is part one. Part two will be coming just a couple days down the road. I'm just going to uh, go through my second part and do it again. Uh, coming up real soon. Thanks for listening, and uh, I'm over and out. It is worth it, and it is working. The problem is we're still not reaching enough kids, and we're not reaching them in time, and that has to change. Um, no, no, please.
please. No more nonsense. Dude, I serve a society by rocking, okay? I'm out there on the front lines liberating people with my music. Rocking ain't no walk in the park, lady. Why don't you tell everybody what the core value is? What's the most important thing? My kid. Huh? My kid, Jim. That's the most important thing, my kid. Rest assured, this train wreck is just getting started. When people come to terms with something like this, they tend to ask the same thing. What can we do? You really want to know? Disobey. That's the only nonviolent solution. Politicians aren't going to help you guys. I know you'd prefer an answer that puts the responsibility onto someone else. But that wouldn't be honest. Until people fully come to terms with the fact that this so-called government is run by criminals, and that we have no moral obligation to obey criminals, then nothing's going to improve. It's as simple as that. Why don't you tell everybody what the core value is? What's the most important thing? My kid. Huh? My kid, Jim. That's the most important thing, my kid. If I don't come back, you tell mother I love her. Your mother's dead, Llewellyn. Well, then I'll tell her myself. And now, Channel 1200 leads the air until tomorrow morning. Our leader wishes you all a pleasant good night. Batmobile over and out.